Westview High School on the map officially in Class 2A. And the Westview Warriors go to 25-3 and three on the year. Troy Neely wins his second state championship. Bounce pass to Rensberger, and he puts it in off the glass. Now he'll pump it up from the left side and hit. We get the trap. That's the trouble when you find Yoder that wide right open. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Westview High School as the girls defeated the Lady Falcons of Fairfield by a score of 42 to 32 tonight. Now we're getting set for the boys game. Westview coming in with a 12 and 4 record and 5 and 0 in the Northeast Corner Conference. Fairfield at 8 and 4 and 4 and 0 in the Northeast Corner Conference. Tonight's game is brought to you by the Blue Gate Restaurant in Chipchewana, by Mike's Automotive Service, by Fur May Funeral Home in LaGrange, by Hyde Auto Body in LaGrange, also by Topeka Do It Best Hardware, a Topeka Pharmacy, also Dale's Dependable Handyman Service, by Weaver Furniture in Chipchewana, by Jerry Standard in Middlebury, by the Hometown Treasure, also by Yoder Insurance in Shipshawana, by Quality Floor in Topeka, by Frontline Auto Tech in Shipshawana, also in Shipshawana, Yoder Shipshawana Hardware and Troyer Saddlery. And our halftime trivia contest is brought to you each and every game by Shipshi Pizza in Shipshawana. Our individual sponsors are Dan and Don Byler, John and Leslie Cook. Tim and Donna Height, Jerry and Fran Hostetler, Josiah and Candace Parker, as well as Jim and Liz Stump, Tim and Kim Taylor, and Roger and Esther Wanger. And good evening, everyone. Jerry Hostetler with Jamie Miller. We're back at Westview. Both teams out on the hardwood as we get set for the boys' game. And Jamie had a chance to talk to Coach Yoder earlier, and we'll go to that interview right after this 30-second timeout. Dale's Dependable Handyman Service is capable of performing a wide variety of common home maintenance and remodeling services. We can help you with everything from garbage disposal installation to fixing a leaky faucet. We work in the kitchen, the bathroom, the attic, the garage, and anywhere else that might need attention. With help from Dale's Dependable Handyman Service, you know that you'll be receiving quality work from a fully trained, licensed, and insured professional. Call us today at 260-463-3970 or visit dalesdependablehandyman.com. This is Jamie Miller with Laguana Media, uh, talking to Coach Rob Yoder before the Fairfield game. And, Coach, you bounced back last week with a, a great week, won the NECC tournament for the seventh time in 11 years. So talk about that a little bit and what it meant to your players and what it feels like to, to win four in a row and get back on track. Uh, as far as the conference tournament, I thought that obviously we had a, 
a tough draw with four games on the road uh, in in five days. So I guess I was just really pleased with our the toughness of our kids to um, to really get through that. You sometimes you just got to gut through some stuff. And I thought we were sharp uh, the first three games. I don't think we were particularly sharp in the in the last game. Uh, give Prairie Heights credit for some of that for just being a good team but just uh, felt like we were a little bit out of gas not as sharp as we could have been but yet we won um, not easily but we won comfortably and so really happy for our kids just to play well and get through it. You mentioned in the past that playing the really good teams makes you better. What have you seen from your guys in practice and maybe some of last week that you can point to that says we're better at, at doing this now? I think the how we work together to score. I think um, sometimes when you are really talented and maybe can just physically or um, talent-wise overwhelm your opponent, sometimes you don't rely on teamwork and screening and passing and cutting and working together and that's not doesn't mean that you're selfish or anything like that you just haven't been pushed to the point where you need to work together to get the job done and I think more than anything we got that down there and then the other thing is it really makes us buckle down defensively because there's so much talent any small mistake is exploited by the other team's offense. So I just think it made us better on both ends. Our ability to work together on offense and our our toughness and ability to be in position and really get the job done on defense. Excellent. Now tonight you play a, a rarity at Westview this year. You play a home game for the first time in 41 days. <laughs> 11 straight road games and 13 out of 14. So what can you say about Fairfield? Uh, Everybody knows about the rivalry and the, the kind of the buzz that's in the gym tonight and got the TV crew. And what do you tell your players? What do we need to do to stop Fairfield and be successful tonight? Well, Par- Fairfield is a perimeter-oriented uh, or base team with a lot of shooters. And so we're going to have to be good, obviously, defending the perimeter. And that's one of our focuses. And along with that, they have a lot of guys that drive the basketball and, and maybe their first option. And the thing they do the best is penetrate the ball. So well, our help side's going to have to be really good, really fast, in position, prepared to take charges and get the ball stopped outside the lane. And um, we're going to have to be good defending the perimeter. I think that's, that's our number one focus going into this thing. All right, Coach. Thanks for your time. Good luck tonight. And we'll be back with the keys to the game right after this. Have you ever been unpleasantly surprised by a purchase and wish you had done more investigation before buying? Gold Key Home Inspections is here to help give you peace of mind about one of your largest investments, your home. Our inspectors are trained to expertly evaluate all aspects of your potential home and give you information to use in making an informed decision. Don't gamble on your future. Give Gold Key Home Inspections a call today to set up your appointment. Welcome back to Westview High School, about three minutes and 45 seconds away from the players coming over to their benches and uh, getting announced. Let's take a look at the keys to the game tonight. As Coach mentioned in his interview, Fairfield's a perimeter-oriented team, so key number one tonight is contain the perimeter players and keep them out of the middle. They can shoot the three. They're probably better at driving than they are shooting, so we want to close out on the three and be able to stop them from getting into the middle. Number two, we need to dominate the middle of the floor, and that is both ends of the floor. I think we can go high-low tonight, and by that I mean go high post to low post with our uh, taller post players and be successful tonight against Fairfield. And we want to dominate on defense at the middle of the floor by keeping them out of the middle. And number three, we want to, on offense, we want to screen and cut with a purpose to get great shots. You know, Fairfield has, they started out hot this year. They were 6-0, I think they started out 6-0. And now they've lost four out of six. There have been a little up and down, but you can be assured tonight we'll probably bring their best game of the year. They seem to get up for this game like no other, whereas we're probably a little more steady. And so it's a, a great environment. I don't think it's been close to this full in here since the LaVille game in yeah, the section right. last year. Granted, there's only been about four games <laughs> since then at home, but good environment. You mentioned the girls game. The JV also won, uh, beat an 11-2 Fairfield JV team that's now 11-3. and 
That raises our JV record to 10 and 3. So we beat them 48 to 44. Don't have the exact scoring. Uh, Lyndon Miller, I think he had 15 to lead us tonight, and his brother Luke, I think, had 10 or 12. Those were kind of the leaders out there tonight. So excellent second half. I think we were down one at halftime, maybe 17, 16, but got physical in the second half and came in with a nice win. So on to the main event. That's right. Great night for basketball at Westview, and it is great to see a full gymnasium. It's great to be back home again after that 41-day uh, vacation, I guess. <laughs> That's gotta be a, it's got to be a Westview record. I yeah. didn't look back, but it's... Well, In yeah. recent memory, it's got to be close to a record. Dan and I were talking about that during the girls' game, and I was thinking it was like, uh, you know, around the 12th of December, but it was actually the 8th of December that we had our last game right. here. So, yeah, it's been a long layoff, but it certainly is good to be back here with the band and the crowd. Uh, boy, it the just last makes home you game. appreciate the Westview fans. The last home game, the average male had not even started Christmas shopping yet. <laughs> you are absolutely <laughs> correct. <laughs> so now we're almost looking forward to the next one. Yeah, but no, uh, no, it feels great. It's uh, it's a cold January night. We know we get the snowfall started already for our supposed uh, blizzard yeah, uh, we'll through the next 24 that. hours. Probably be about two inches total once all said and done. But... Uh, Great night to be inside. I think this fan base is ready for a home game and ready for a good game. And, you know, by my definition of good, is probably better than some people. I'd settle for a 25-point win tonight. How there you, you go. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We're going to meet the starting lineups here very shortly. By the way, tomorrow, weather permitting, there will be another game here. Garrett. That's right. Garrett visits Westview for another Northeast Corner Conference game. So first out for Fairfield will be Peyton Faldo, a 5'7 senior, and we saw his sister play in the first game tonight. Bentley Miller also comes out, a 5'8 senior, followed by Skylar Mast, a 6'0 even senior. Then the big guy, 6'3 senior Cordell Hofer, and Nolan Sherrick, a 5'10 junior. Fairfield's coached by Troy Beachy in his seventh year at the helm of the Falcons. He has a record of 100 wins and 76 losses. Charlie Yoder, number five, six five, junior, averaging 21 and a half points per game for the Warriors. Elijah Hales, the second leading scorer on the team, averaging 16.3 points per game, six four senior. Drew Litweiler, a 6'4 sophomore, averaging three points per game. Next out will be Josh Ostetler, words number 33, 6'1 senior, averaging 10.1 points per game. And Nick Rensberger, 6'5 senior. Nick comes in with a 9.6 point per game average. So it's Westview and Fairfield. And last year, the Falcons defeated the Warriors over there during the regular season matchup by a score of 56 to 52. After we had defeated West or at at Westville, when we defeated Fairfield in the NECC tournament last year. Yeah, I don't think our players have forgotten that either. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I haven't. In fact, I was still thinking about that loss the other night, and I, I was thinking we lost twice to them. <laughs> we, uh, we came back, or I mean, we we won the tournament, but we didn't, uh, and then we we lost to them the following week. Hofer with the ball as Fairfield controls the tip. Bounce passes it outside the mast. Long shot by Sherrick is no good, and Hales rips it off the glass. Yoder, three, no good. Pulled down by Rensberger, but as it's stripped away by the little guy underneath, Cade Kitson. Or rather, uh, Peyton Faldo. Sherrick with it right side. Josh Ostetler on him. Out well, front. Kind of a 1-3-1 one, one trapping defense here. Little surprising to see him come out in that. Yeah, no kidding. Long threes off the mark, no good. Rebound Bentley Miller, and the putback is good. Yeah. 
So Fairfield hits the scoreboard first tonight. Now Hales with the long shot. No good and a rebound Cordell Hofer. Fairfield back in a hurry. Sherrick with it in the corner. Cross courts it. He'll get it into the hands of Bentley Miller. Bounce passes it right to Faldo. Faldo back outside to Bentley Miller. And we have a traveling violation on Miller. I think what they're trying to do here is one, cut down the driving lanes. They're going to look different with this kind of defense. And number two, make some of the guys that don't make the plays handle the ball. And I think that's what we saw that time with number three. So it's we are playing a zone, is that right? <laughs> no, it's just like a 1-3-1 one, one trap. Okay. I mean, if you want to call it a zone, you can whisper it. But yeah, no it's kidding. not straight man-to-man -man at the and moment. I'm about ready to call a timeout from here and go down and talk to Rob about this. Into the paint, and we have a travel violation this time against Nick. I didn't see either one of those, but. Yeah, we only have, oh, no, we do have three referees. Earlier on, I saw two. We've got, yeah, two of them were refereeing the Goshen varsity game, or I mean the, <laughs> the girls yeah, varsity so game. Goshen was here tonight. But yeah, it's unusual for them to do a double header, I thought. Three in the air by Faldo's good. So Fairfield off to a quick five to nothing lead here. As you might expect. Right. <laughs> Yoder. To Josh Ostetler, to Rensberger, knocked away. Yoder picks it up. He'll put it up from the free throw line off the back of the iron and won't drop. We're coming out cold. We've seen this before, though, Jamie. Well, we get so fired up that we just kind of geeked up. And Sherrick now hits one from three-point land. Yeah, I think we got to get out of that 1-3-1 one, one and go to our normal defense because we're just giving them confidence right now. Their shooters are wide open. Ransberger tries to get it into Hales and it's knocked away. Now Josh gets it back on a steal and he's fouled on a reach in. Peyton Faldo is only 5'7". Boy, he's right down there even with the basketball and he rips it right out of our hands. Well, that's one advantage if we bring the ball down. We've taken their advantage away. Yoder, finally we get a shot. Charlie breaks the ice with a three-pointer. Cordell Hofer being hawked there on defense by Drew Litweiler. Double team, Miller gets it out of trouble to Faldo. Faldo drives, bounce pass on the back door, gets it inside, but Fairfield can't convert. Drew Miller with it on the wing, inside. Hales beats his man, puts it up, scores off the glass. Westview has fought their way back. Eight to five now. Fairfield with the lead and the ball. With the ball is Skyler Mast. They'll get it to Sherrick. Hofer back to Sherrick. Another three by Faldo. This time it's way off the mark. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Fairfield. It'll be Westview ball. Another thing, this, the purpose of this, I think, is just to try to Stop the drive first. And you can see they're jacking up threes like they're going out of style right now. Right. If they hit them, they'll stay ahead. If they miss them, we'll start, I think, taking over. Yoder, Hales, right side to Josh Ostetler. Back to Hales. Rensberger in the corner. Josh for three. Short rebound. Put back. No good by Rensberger. Now we have a whistle on a foul. It's going to be called on Fairfield. That's three big rebounds already for Nick tonight. Hofer picks up his first foul. First or second team foul on Fairfield. Hales looking to inbound. He'll get it into Charlie. To Rensberger. Back to Charlie. Here's three is good from, a, from deep. Tied up at eight. Westview rattles off eight straight points thanks to two threes by Charlie. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Fairfield. It'll be Westview ball and a chance to take the lead. It seems like there's a strategy here to make a Nolan go left. They're, Could be. They were playing. We're really forcing him that way, which makes sense. He's a right-handed player. Rensberger in the paint. Goes to Josh Hostetler. Bounce passes at left side to Yoder. Interesting that they got number two guarding Charlie. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bit of a height advantage for Charlie there. Faldo is quick, though. Yeah, and sometimes a little guy down by your knees is enough to uh, keep you off oh, balance. Yeah. Drew Litweiler gets it to Charlie. Inside three minutes to go in the first quarter. Josh, a lob into Rensberger. He's triple teamed to give off to Miller. Hosteller back to Litweiler. Hales, Josh, Yoder coming across the lane. He'll pull it out a corner then on the wing. Charlie tries to drive the baseline. Loses it, but it's knocked out of bounds, and it's going to be Westview ball. Cade Gall. Fairfield yeah. playing a little of their typical junk defense on us right now. So it's taking us a little while, I think, to figure it out. Hales bounce passes it to Yoder. Back to Hales out front. Now to Josh O'Stetler for three, and it's oh. in and out. Won't go, and Sherrick with a rebound for the Falcons. We go left side to Mass. Mass drives it into the lane, and we have a whistle on a foul. It's going to be called on Nick. Yeah, and there's the drive we try to we want to try to avoid. Yeah. First on Nick. First on Westview. And Skyler Mass, the six-foot senior, will get two from the charity stripe. So one thing about Fairfield that nothing really is going to bother them. They got six seniors. Uh, you know, they're even an older team than we are. They have six seniors, and I think all the rest are juniors. They're experienced. Of course, Fairfield now a 3A team. This should be a big rivalry in the sectional, and during the season it still is. But We'll see what happens here with uh, Josh. Sometimes if he gets off to poor starts, he quits shooting and scoring. We'll see how, how that goes for him. Yoder. And Elijah Hales are the lone scorers for Westview so far. Yoder with two threes and Elijah with a field goal. In Nick, the paint, Rensberger. Next guy shoot that. Yeah, he does. Wide open. Shots no good by Elijah, but he's fouled. And let's see if that's going to be a two-shot foul. It should be. That was They're doing on. a pretty good job of pressing up on Nick when he catches the ball there. But he's catching it like 12 feet away, and he's yeah. got a little bit of a height advantage there. So. Next time, I bet it's going up. Elijah shots in the air, and he hits. Ten to nine, Westview trailing by one. Elijah Hales a chance to tie it here with a successful free throw. And it's no good this time. Chase down there by uh, Cade Gall. He'll get it to Sherrick. Derek bounce passes it to Peyton Faldo. They'll swing it around left side to now inside of Faldo, and he's called for a travel. Dennis Wingard and Jordan Schrock come in for the Warriors as Josh Hostetler and Drew Litweiler will get a rest. Minute 43 to go in the first quarter. Westview trailing by one. Rensberger at the free throw line goes to Schrock and he travels. I don't know what these refs are seeing. I didn't see that either. This is one of these games where it seems like they're just itching to call travel. Yeah. That's what, the fourth one already? Man, they were calling a ton of them in the girls game too, but I think those were pretty much legitimate. <laughs> maybe they still they have like a hangover. Yeah, maybe so. They're just in that uh, routine. Miller loses it, picked up by Rensberger. He passes it ahead to Hales. Hales drives it, pulls it back out on the pass to Rensberger. Fakes, hands off to Yoder. Fakes. Rensberger, now to Dennis Wingard out front. 65 seconds to go in the first quarter. Rensberger, elbow left side. Knocked away, stolen by Bentley Miller. He's going to take it in. He'll put it up. Miss the layup, and the rebound is pulled down by Rensberger. Goes out of bounds, and it was last touch off the head of Nick Rensberger, they said. Hmm. Interesting. Coming in, back in, will be Skyler Mast, and Bentley Miller will come out. 54.2 seconds to go in the first quarter. Inbounding will be Peyton Faldo. Bounce passes it to Sherrick. 
Sherry drives it into the paint, has it stripped away, loose on the floor, picked up by Charlie Yoder, but he was on the out-of-bounds line. It'll be a turnover and turn back to Fairfield. Looked like three guys kind of stared at it, waiting for the other guy to get it yeah. that time. So I think that's what the coach is a little upset about. Faldo wafts it outside to Gall, and he gets it to Sherrick. It's like Fairfield will be content to take the last shot of the quarter here. Sherrick and Faldo out front. Now joining him is Mast. Back to Faldo and then Sherrick. 25 seconds to go in the quarter. Fairfield up by one. Sherrick, Faldo, 15 seconds. And now Hofer, he hits Faldo. Faldo fakes, tries to throw it inside on the back door alley. And that fails, two seconds. Faldo will get the shot off and it's gonna be no good. <laughs> that was closer than I thought it was gonna be. So we played eight minutes here at Westview in the boys game of this doubleheader tonight. Fairfield 10, Westview 9. We'll be back with second quarter action right after this 60-second timeout. Does your paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialist will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service, and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Height Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. Drew Miller will inbound for Westview to begin the second quarter of play. Westview chasing one, 10 to nine. Litweiler. Litweiler, did I say Miller? <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah. He might be related to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not Litweiler, but. Yeah, the other one. Yeah. Josh Hostetler, he'll cross court it. Knocked away. Fairfield in kind of a Looks like a diamond in one. They got four guys in the middle, kind of in a diamond shape with a, a point top, and then they got somebody smelling Charlie's breath wherever he oh, goes. Man. Skylar Mast is on him now. Charlie with the ball. Miller, good ball movement. They're not getting a shot. There's Rensberger. Gets his man in the air, puts it up and scores. That's okay. We're going to play junk defense. We'll hold the ball for a minute, get a three-point play out of it. Good job by Nick getting Braden Helms has just come in here up in the air on defense, and he just went right up with it and drew the foul. I think a few things have to happen tonight for Fairfield to have a chance to win. One is for our our complimentary players to, to really have a poor shooting night and not hit any open shots. And two, for us to do some uncharacteristic things that would Boy. cause us to not to score very much. Right now we're not scoring very much and our Josh hasn't hit a shot yet and I don't think anybody outside of us top two scorers have. So, so yep. far the plan's working, but we're still ahead. I thought we were gonna get another travel there, but it's a foul on Rensburger. And that's his second. Yep. So what do you do? With well, he's rebounding really well right now, so I'd hate to take him out. Looks like he's coming out. No, he is. Well, maybe not. Well, I guess not. Well, I guess they, they put him in too late. Inbound pass comes to Mast, and he lays it in. What happened there? Uh, they ran the same play we've always run, and right. we forgot how to defend it. Yeah. <laughs> 12 to 11, Fairfield by one. Drew Litweiler 
Bounce passes it down on the baseline to Elijah Hales back out front to Littweiler. I'd look for Littweiler to get in position here on one of these kickouts to hit an open shot. Charlie to Josh inside to Nick. His shot short and it's pulled out of there by Hofer. Hofer takes it all the way, puts it up, scores. They're going to count it and he's fouled. Nick's coming out, Dennis coming in. So we lose the bigness. Yeah, we length. lose the rebounding, we gain a little quickness. This might be one of those games where Dennis can come through from some of those nice little sneaky plays he's good at. Hofer completes a three-point play, and Fairfield ups their lead to four now, 15 to 11. Charlie Yoder gets it to Hales, out front it'll come to Dennis. Now to Littweiler, Hostetler, back to Littweiler. Yoder for another three, and he hits. Charlie's keeping us in this one. Yeah, he's keeping us close, isn't he? Sherrick now with Charlie on him. Bounce passes at right side. Ball knocked away and stolen from the freshman. And that's Braden Helms. Helms, 6'3", good size for a freshman but looks a little green out there. Littweiler for three, and he hits. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. Westby with a two-point lead now, 17-15, five and a half minutes to go in the first half, and Coach Troy Beachy of the Fairfield Falcons lets talk things over. We'll be back right after this 30-second timeout. When you're turning your house into a home, your furniture plays a big part in the finished product. You'll love the finished products at Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana. Come see the Weaver family. They will work with you to find a piece that fits your needs, or they'll have it custom built just for you. Weaver Furniture Sales is located just south of 5 and 20 in Shipshawana. Visit their website at weaverfurniturasales.com. You know... And we're back at Westview. Well, Drew had a really good game the other night in the championship against Prairie Heights. I think he had seven points. Not sure if those were all in the first half or. He looked really but, comfortable. But he's just, he's, he's getting there. He's That's really what, adjusting to the speed of the game and the physicality. And he's, he's, he's always been a good shooter, but it takes a little more at this level. Faldo with it, takes it down on the baseline. He's double teamed down there, gets it out of trouble. He'll get it to Mast, and Mast travels. So Westview a chance to increase their lead. Dennis Winger inbounding in front of his teammates on the bench. Charlie Yoder now to Drew Litweiler. Hales looks for Charlie, and he'll go to Winger. Winger to Litweiler. Out of heels with uh, Mass guarding him now. Looks like Elijah had that shot if he wanted it, but. Josh gets it, and he hits! All right, and there's back-to-back -back threes by, as I call the complimentary players. Ball stolen away by Yoder and a quick foul on Fairfield. Skyler Mass picks up the reach-in foul. Well, I think that 1-3-1 has come a little quicker since Nick's not in the game. And we're starting to figure out their ball fakes a little bit, I, I think. A couple possessions in a row that have been a little shaky for Fairfield. They're still in that diamond and one, really, aren't they? Ball stolen away. Sherrick has it. He'll take it all away. Put it up. Misses Alea. Rebound Bentley Miller. He'll put it up and be hacked from behind by Dennis, I believe. It was either Dennis or Josh. Yeah, they're overplaying the pass there for Dennis. He's got to take that ball and penetrate and get to the openings. Dennis picks up his first foul. That will send Bentley Miller to the stripe shooting two. Five-point lead for Westview, 20 to 15, 4.23 to go in the first half. Miller's free throw is short. Sure. 
Well, I know Coach is glad we're hitting the threes. I think he wishes maybe we didn't have to rely on them right now. we well, got five right. of them. Yeah. But that's what they're giving us, and we're more than capable of that for wide open. Second shot goes for Miller, his third of the evening. Westview's lead shrinks to four, 20 to 16. Yoder with it. He'll get it to Hostetler. It's interesting that both teams essentially are playing a 1-3-1 to try to stop the other team. Yeah. Hales. I think we need to try to penetrate this uh, top layer. We're out by the yeah, we've got another volleyball steal. court right now. And Sherrick with it. He pulls it back out because he was outnumbered on defense. Inside pass to Hofer. He feeds underneath to uh, Mast, and Mast is fouled. He'll go to the stripe shooting two. Skyler Mast, a six-foot senior at the free throw line. Seems like everybody we play has a mast. Yeah, there are a <laughs> lot of them, aren't there? I know there was when we played uh, West Noble. Yeah, West Noble had one. I don't know if Central almost got one. It seems like they should. Well, it's, was it uh, Eastside had a mast and they had a Yoder, too? I'm not sure. Was it Eastside that had the mast? Well... I know Central Noble had a Yoder. Yeah. Ball tipped out of bounds as uh, Skyler Mask missed both free throws. What we're trying to do is get the ball to Elijah in the post. The problem in the last few possessions, we can't even get it close. Our ball handlers are not taking care of the ball very well. Charlie Yoder chases it down. Almost went out of bounds. Josh for three. This time it's off the mark, and Hofer with a rebound for Fairfield. He'll take it all away. Should have had an offensive foul, but a great block by Hales. Bounce passes it to Winger. Winger tries to get it out of trouble, but he's called for traveling. Westview fans. Uh, Might have been a little bump there to help him travel. I don't think our fans liked it over there. A few of them stood up, gave it to the official. Well, they're still on that traveling kick. Nothing else matters. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Fairfield with it, Faldo. But that's what, three three straight or three out of four possessions with a turnover. That's a that's not good. That's Shot by Sherrick's off the mark. Skylar Mask with a rebound. Faldo for three. He hits his second of the evening. One point ball game, 20 to 19 Westview. A little bit of a risk bringing Nick in here with 2.45 to go and two fouls, but I think we have to. We're not getting anything done with the lineup we had in there. Ball knocked away, stolen. Bentley Miller with it. Miller on him, or Litweiler on him, and he fouls him as he goes up for the shot. Four out of five. <laughs> well, I said we had to do two things be uncharacteristic, which we are right now. We have hit some shots, though, so we still have the lead. Miller will get two shots. I think he's hit one out of two so far tonight. Hits that one. 2020, 231 to go in the first half. The girls were winners earlier, 42 to 32. Second shot, in and out, no good. Josh Hostetler pulls down the rebound. Heels with it, Litweiler. Heels, Josh Hostetler down. Rensberger cross courts it to Charlie. Now to Heels, back to Charlie. Now Hales will pop a three, won't go, tipped away, last touch by Westview, it'll be Fairfield ball. Well, it's frustrating a little bit for, for Westview fans, you know, you keep an eye on other team scores and, you know, Fairfield last week lost to Eastside at home. Unbelievable. You know, didn't come ready to play. Yeah. And so then they come here and play the game of their <laughs> season. 
But that's what you get with rivalry games. I think we'll figure this out. We're just kind of scuffling a little bit. It's rare to see us turn the ball over as much as we are. Well, yeah, I mean, you'd think we were trailing. It's, I mean, at least it's a tie ball game. Charlie with the steal with the long arms. He'll lay it in. 11 now for Charlie, 22 to 20. Westview with a minute and a half to go in the first half. Sherrick bounce passes it to Faldo. Don't forget we'll be giving away a pizza at halftime. Hofer, Mask, now Faldo, his shot from three, no good this time. Pulled down by Sherrick, but stripped away by Charlie Yoder. Then we have a whistle and a timeout called quickly by Coach Yoder. Yeah, he was about an inch from Lane's ear. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy across the way saw it, but Lane was so focused so. on the play that <laughs> you can't do two things at once there. I don't hardly blame him. He's laughing about it now. Minute 11 to go in the first half. Westview has taken the lead, 22 to 20, and Westview has the basketball. Well, Charlie's making plays right now on both ends of the, of the court, and he's not even scoring. I mean, he did have a layup down there, but he, right. he's getting rebounds, he's getting steals, and that's he's starting to turn the tide there back toward us. Right. Drew Litweiler inbound underneath the Fairfield basket. This is a big game. If we want to win is. that conference title outright, it's definitely a win you have to have. Both teams undefeated. Fairfield 4-0, Westview 5-0. As far as the, the strength of the conference top to bottom, we probably played this, counting this game, the strength of the conference. All kicked out of bounds. Whereas Fairfield's kind of played the bottom half, I would say. Right. So the second half of the year shakes our way a little bit, but you'd like to have this game to well, just to say you beat Fairfield, but definitely for the conference. Hale's looking to inbound, bounces, passes it into Yoder. He'll put it up and miss off the iron to rebound Faldo. Inside a minute now to go in the first half. Westview up by 2-22-20. With the ball is Skyler Mass. He'll get it out front to Sherrick. Faldo open for three and he hits again. Boy, you can't leave that guy open. Yeah, if we're gonna if we trap like that and they get that reversal, there's always somebody open. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if we keep up that in the second half. We'll go for the last shot here and try to take the lead. Fairfield by one, 23, 22, 20 seconds to go in the first half. Hales and Litweiler play catch. Now 10 seconds, and Hales will advance. Rensberger, Litweiler for three. Oh, no good. Tipped up. No good. Shot it by Litweiler at the buzzer. Won't go. Hits off the back of the iron and comes out. So we played the first 16 minutes of exciting basketball here at Westview in this big rivalry game in the interconference rival, the Fairfield Falcons and Westview Warriors doing battle. Fairfield with the one point advantage at halftime, 23 to 22 over Westview. We'll be back to take a look at halftime scoring right after this timeout. What makes this place a special community? That's just short, sweet, but it's community. We've got parents that are supportive of schools, they're supportive of their kids, they're supportive of the teachers, and that makes this place really special. I'm not sure that 100% of everybody is going to always agree on that's what's best for kids, but you do what you believe is best for kids, and you do that every day. And you don't have to worry about what are the powers to be going to say or what, what's going to happen or are we going to have a population revolt or something. No. And our results bear it out. I mean, we've got, we're right there. We're turning out students that are accomplishing all kinds of stuff. You know, we've never had a low expectation for students here. Winning is a goal. Nobody says my goal is to finish last.
We have good programs in drama. We have good, great programs in music. We have great programs in being servants for the community. Test-wise, man, we're right on top. We're right on top. In the area, in the state, we're way up there. Whether they go from here into the workforce, whether they go from here into business, whether they go from here to college, and graduate school, and med school, don't figure we're done. We're not done. We gotta go be the best, and that still doesn't end, because you, you can still be a little better. We're on to what matters more, and that's, or do our kids finish? Where do they finish in life? I, I don't care about the ball game. Where do they finish in life? And I think we're doing a, I think we're doing a pretty darn good job. And before we get to the scoring for tonight's ball game, it's halftime, and you know what that means. Get your texting fingers ready because it's time for our Shipsy Pizza Halftime Pizza Giveaway Trivia Contest. Shipsy Pizza is located on State Road 5 North in Shipshawana. And the winner of tonight's contest will receive a certificate for a free large one-topping pizza from Shipsy Pizza. So we have a different number to text tonight, so pay close attention. Please text your answer to the following number, 574-215-4110. Once again, that number is 574-215-4110. And the question for tonight, what varsity boys basketball player used to play for the Westview Warriors? Once again, the Fairfield, I'm sorry, what Fairfield varsity basketball player used to play for Westview? Text your answer to 574-215-4110. Once again, that's 574-215-4110. What varsity basketball player for Fairfield currently used to play for Westview? Good luck. Jamie. Come on All in right. with the uh, scoring. Yep, 23-22, the halftime score. Fairfield is led tonight by number two, Peyton Faldo. He's got three three-pointers. Number three, Bentley Miller has four points with a field goal and two free throws. Number 10, Skylar Mast has a field goal along with two free throws. Cordell Hoffer has three points with a field goal and a free throw. And 5'10 junior, Nolan Sherry has three points as well. So 9-4-4-3-3 for Fairfield, and those are all the starters too, so no bench players scored for Fairfield. For Westview, we're led tonight with Charlie Yoder. He's got 11, three three-pointers and a two-pointer. Elijah Hales has a uh, three points. He's got a two-pointer and a free throw. Drew Litwiler added a three. Josh Hostetler had a three. And Nick Rensberger had a field goal for two. So 11, three, 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 and two for us, and similarly to Fairfield, no substitute players have scored. So I think uh, it's apparent that both teams rely heavily on their starters. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I would say from that. So it's yeah, it's been an interesting game. It, it doesn't have the flow that I expected. I know Fairfield, they probably scout 75% of our games, if not all of them. It's like their game of the year to win. We see and a so familiar face we see about at, every game. Yeah, at every game <laughs> we see someone on their staff there scouting us. And so you can always expect junk defenses. You remember last year we came out and they didn't even guard two of our players. Yeah. And so they're having to do more this year as far as guarding those complimentary players. But it's still kind of a, we haven't quite figured it out yet. There's lots of openings and, and gaps, but the guys that are getting the ball aren't the guys in position to, to make a play in that scenario. And Elijah's our our best ball handler, but he's down in the post, but we can't even get the ball to him. So he's got one field goal in the first half. And, you know, it's probably by Fairfield's design. 
leave right. it in the hands of the guys that haven't proven it game after game. And we're just going to have to scrap and claw and, and get this game turned around a little bit and show we can beat that kind of a defense. So tonight, uh, let's see, turnovers seem like they've been a big part of Fairfield has 10 and we have eight. So for a game, that would be 20 and 16. That's quite a few turnovers in a low scoring game. So let's see some of the shooting percentages for Fairfield. Overall, let's see, seven for 15 for 46.7%. Looks like three pointers are four for nine. And that's 44%. For Westview, we're eight for 19 overall for 42%, five for 12 from three. 41 so that's pretty good from three we just you know when you have eight turnovers that's at least eight possessions where you didn't get a good shot and that's what we really emphasize and the way we shoot the ball on the year I think we're shooting from two like 58 percent yes we are for the 38 percent from three and so if you just take half of those possessions and make the shots you would normally make you're up by 10 right and you know Fairfield probably could say the same thing I don't know what they shoot from two for the year but uh, rebounding, not a lot of rebounds to go around. Fairfield's got 12, we have seven. Offensively, we only have two offensive rebounds. Fairfield has three. So that's a, probably a point of emphasis in the locker room. Really, for both teams that are playing the 1-3-1, you're going to give up offensive rebounds if the other team's going after it because you're not blocking out your normal man. Right. He's kind of guarding an area, and weird bounces happen. So assists, assists kind of tell you what kind of ball movement it's going we do have seven assists on eight field goals that's pretty good so just a real real kind of tight game statistic wise on both sides Fairfield's helped us out they've only hit five out of nine free throws and yeah uh, they've been cold from there so we've only hit one out of three so neither team did real well from there right. first quarter Fairfield outscored us 10 to 9 that quarter was all tied up at 13 so each team's has kind of uh, got the temperature of the other team so to speak and frequently we've seen very good three-pointers out of this team, uh, our team, and we'll see if we can have that. What, what do you look for uh, from Coach Yoder in the second half? I mean, you've, you've been in the locker room at halftime with him. Uh, maybe not in a game exactly like this, but similar. And what do you expect to see from the Warriors? I would expect maybe the placement of our players against their 1-3-1 to be a little different. Maybe Charlie's in the middle of that where he can make plays shooting, passing, even high posting a little bit. Uh, maybe you bring him up. Maybe you bring Elijah up a little bit and put the guys that aren't typically shooting the ball down where they're not going to get it anyhow. I don't know. That's just a random And that is a random if Fairfield thought, stays with what they're Yeah, exactly. Doing. And about as soon yeah. as we do that, you know, they're pretty, pretty diligent about stopping any run we've had. We got a little run going. They called timeout. We got a little run going, and then we turned it over four times in a row. And that kind of killed any momentum we had. So well, I think the key you mentioned. I mean, they're a veteran team. Like a lot of seniors on that team, so they're they're maybe not as big and as we are as far as length is concerned. But uh, they're quick, they're smart, and it'll be an interesting second half. Good ball game. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if we go to a straight man. I think coach is just scared that we can't keep up with their perimeter quickness if we go straight man to man. But we'll, I wonder if we wouldn't try it a few possessions and see what happens. And who's the winner? Kevin Kastetter of Millersburg, congratulations. You're our winter, winner of the Chipsy Pizza our halftime trivia contest. Nolan Sherrick has started his schooling here in the Westview School District. Shot no good up inside there by Skyler Mast. Nick once again not getting the charging call right there. You can yep. see they posted up and went right at him right away trying to get his third foul on him. And we were in a straight man-to-man -man that time. Westview gets it back, Hales with it. Charlie Yoder, he'll pop a three, and he hits. Good start for the second half for the Warriors. Ball stolen away underneath. Charlie Yoder with the pass from Rensberger, now to Josh Hosteller. He puts it up and in. And right away, Coach Beachy wants a timeout for Fairfield. Yeah, I kind of like our man-to-man. -man. It, it, it's what we're used to. Right. And we're aggressive in it. We get our hands on balls. No, we did benefit from a missed layup that time. Well, so that's I can't true, credit it all to that. But yeah. 
Timeout on the court. We'll be back right after this 30-second timeout. Have you ever been unpleasantly surprised by a purchase and wish you had done more investigation before buying? Gold Key Home Inspections is here to help give you peace of mind about one of your largest investments, your home. Our inspectors are trained to expertly evaluate all aspects of your potential home and give you information to use in making an informed decision. Don't gamble on your future. Give Gold Key Home Inspections a call today to set up your appointment. And we're back at Westview. Both teams will be coming out of their huddle here shortly, but I will elaborate a little bit on the pizza winner. Kevin Kostetter is our winner, and he did answer the question, and it was Nolan Sherrick that started at Westview and moved over to Fairfield is playing here tonight. Kevin, I believe, attended Westview. And I think he even played basketball here back in a while back. Yes. Fairfield has been back in the 80s probably. With the ball, Nolan Sherrick in the paint, goes right side in the corner to Mass. His shot's long from three-point range. Drew Littweiler pulls it off the glass, gives it to Hostetler, and he loses it as he looked to Nick Rensberger, and then he, it slipped out of his hands out of bounds. So it'll be Fairfield ball. Josh was kind of a disgusted look on his face. <laughs> yeah, That would have been happy. a big basket. That would have been our biggest lead of the game. Westview up by 4, 27-23. Sherrick with it with Yoder on him. One thing in the scouting report on Nolan is whenever he wants to shoot it, he goes left, and he does a lot of reverse spins. Faldo was able to work his way into the lane and get past the defense, but then he was held, and it'll be a two-shot foul coming. And that's number three on Nick. Looked like all ball to me, but you can't stick your hand in there on a 5'7 guy. They'll never give you that call. Well, it's true. Faldo with three threes tonight. First time he's been at the charity stripe, and he's going to hit off the bounce. Well, you see a bounce like that go in about once every 10 games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His sister, Laney, is a sophomore. She played earlier tonight on the girls' varsity. And we have a lane violation on Hofer. Ball didn't, or the free throw wasn't a good one anyway, so wouldn't have counted no matter what. 27-24, Westview with the lead. Rensberger, <laughs> two Fairfield defenders ended up on the floor. Shot by Hales is good from three. First three of the night for Elijah. Westview with a six point lead now, 30 to 24. Sherrick gets it to Faldo, fakes the three, gives to Mass. Bounce pass down low to Hofer. Hofer goes up against Tails, misses his shot, but he's fouled. Elijah Hales picks up his first foul tonight. 5.58 to go in the third quarter. Westview has built a six-point lead here in the third quarter. Yeah, that's a questionable foul right there. I, yeah. 12. Hofer yeah. yeah, Ho Ho uh, initiated the contact on that, so I'm not sure what they were seeing. You know, you see that called a lot, you know, where they, even though they do initiate the contact, it's not consistent. Right. Shot up by Hofer is good. He has two from the free throw line and the one field goal. Five point lead now for Westview. Litweiler with it right side. Rensberger back to Litweiler. Looks like Fairfield's in that same defense. Ball stripped away from behind from Yoder by Mast and it goes out of bounds. So it'll be, it'll stay in the possession of Westview. Well, you can see with some of the scouting Fairfield has done what they're taking away. They're taking that 15 foot jumper from Nick away and when the ball gets to the baseline to Charlie they're triple teaming him because <laughs> that's where that's his favorite spot yep and Josh is left open for another three his second 33 25 and our leads up to eight now with the ball is Bentley Miller and he travels 
Trying to get the pass to Hofer, and he had to hesitate, and he dragged the pivot foot. Yep, that's a little bit of extra effort on defense to stop the passing angle, and it makes a difference. Good third quarter so far for Westview. Pass inside. Josh waits for the defense to clear. <laughs> oh, sits on the back of the iron forever. Comes down, and then we have a foul on an undercut on Hofer. <laughs> Hofer with his second foul tonight. Boy, I haven't seen that for a while. No, the only thing crazier is what happens with the football sometimes, but that's... <laughs> I thought that thing was going to stay there. I did too. Litweiler. Yoder. Hales. Back to Yoder. Left wide open for a three, and he hits. Four threes for Charlie tonight. Westview with an 11 point lead in the third quarter. 4.59 to go. 30 second timeout. We'll be back right after this 30 second break. Does your paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialists will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Hyde Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. Fairfield inbounding underneath the Westview basket. Westview is building an 11-point lead here in the third quarter. Went to the locker room with a one-point deficit to Fairfield, 23-22. to And it will come out on fire here in the third quarter. Hofer inside, tries to put it up, goes out of bounds. It's going to be Westview basketball. Well, we, since we've gone straight man-to-man, -man, I don't know if they've gotten off a good shot yet. I don't think so. They're just, our length is bothering them a little bit, and they don't have the natural openings that are created when they reverse it against a 1-3-1. Litweiler from Charlie, back to Charlie. Out front to Hostetler, back to Yoder. Yoder will go ahead and shoot, oh. and he misses from three. That would have been huge. That was a heat check. Yeah. <laughs> not the right. best shot. He thought, ah, why not? I don't think coach is real happy about it, but we've got an 11-point lead, a little bit to work with here. You get a little freedom when you've been carrying the team all night. <laughs> well, you should. <laughs> 14 for Charlie, and 12 of those points coming from three-point land. Faldo, he has a long three, and he hits. That's his fourth for the night. Yeah, we didn't play that double screen right. They, they set a double screen at the top of the key for Faldo, and well, he's we're hit four of them now. Didn't right. We? We're supposed to switch out on that because one, his primary defender can't really get through to. Josh's shot wouldn't fall. It's tipped away. Faldo tries to save it. He does to Mast. Mast brings it up. 3.40 to go in the third quarter. Faldo goes to Mast. Mast wide open for three. That's going to be short. Battle for the rebound. Josh pulls it out of there, gives to Nick, and he'll lay it in. Good work by the Warriors. Miller to Faldo. Sherrick tries to drive on Charlie. Puts it up. Misses off the glass, and Charlie pulls down the rebound. And now we have a jump ball or a <laughs> held ball. It's two Falcons were battling Charlie for that ball. Well, good toughness by Charlie grabbing that ball in the crowd. I think it's just a habit for Fairfield to have three players around him at all times. So <laughs> I think so. Well, what we want to see here, we want to see great shots. We got the lead. We got the momentum. Don't take something stupid. Good pass inside the Hales, and he muscles his way up and hits. I thought he, I was a little concerned he got too far underneath, but he was able to Battle his way out and put it up and in. Yeah, he's a pretty good contortionist in there. He showed it that time. Mass, Sherrick drives, meets Hales, puts it up short, rebound, Yoder. We had the run out there too if he'd have seen it, but. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Good interior pass to 
Rensberger from Littweiler. And Fairfield doesn't have the same intensity they had in the first half. No, they don't. Down 14 now. Westview has had a very solid third quarter. Mast out front to Faldo. Faldo to Hofer, now to Sherrick. Sherrick backs it out. He'll give to Mast. Bounce passes it right side to Hofer. He'll try to drive on Hales. Shoots it across the court to Gall. His shot from three-point lands no good. It goes off the players, uh, Fairfield players, and out of bounds. One thing I, th I think this may show is maybe not even last week, but the week before when we played those four teams in a row, the state-ranked teams, yep. you had to play hard and good for four quarters. So, yeah, we're used to it. Shot up, no good by Rensberger, but he's fouled up to, after the miss by Litweiler from three-point land. Rensberger got the offensive rebound and put it back up. Couldn't get it to drop, but he'll shoot two from the free throw line. I think Fouled. that's his second offensive rebound this half. He's, he's working hard in there. Second shot is good by, or first shot is good by Nick. You see, the first half, they only credited him with two rebounds, which I thought he had a few more than that. He's at least doubled that. And he's doubled his free throw shooting tonight as he hits his first two. It's good to see him drill two in a row, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Looks like he'd get one out of the two, but. Aldo down the lane, puts it up. Good move by the little guy. His first regular field goal of the night. 44-30. 69 seconds to go in the third quarter. Hales with it way out front to Litweiler, right side of Josh. boy, Nick! See, there's no one even near him this half. Fairfield's kind of gone away from that 1-3-1 one, one as well and down to their main, and now we know why they went 1-3-1. One, one. <laughs> yeah. They just can't quite guard us in that straight That's up. Right. Glad to see Nick take that shot. Travel on the baseline by Gall, and it'll be a turnover on Fairfield. And we're going for one here. So, so far, we've outscored by them by 17 this quarter. So, yeah. we, the hope for third quarter might have been our best one of the year, <laughs> as a matter of fact. It's got to be. It's got to be up there anyway. Faldo. That's a good point. Our engineer just mentioned we've scored more this quarter than we did the first half. Well, we scored, what, 22 in the first half? Yep. Good point. Th 46 to 30, Westview up by 16. Half a minute to go in the third quarter. Rensberger to Hales out front. Dennis Winger in. He has the ball. He'll hand off to, to Elijah with 15 seconds now to go. Picks up his dribble, looking for a pass, gives it to Dennis, inside 10 now. Should be going for the shot here. Yeah, we better get going here. Three seconds, and Josh will heave it up, and that'll do it. So we play three quarters now from Westview. Things a little bit more on the positive side here now for the Warriors after that third quarter. Westview 46, Fairfield 30. We'll be back with a fourth quarter right after this 60-second timeout. Does your paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialist will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Hyde Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years.
Fairfield will inbound to begin the fourth quarter. Cade Gall bounce passes it into Nolan Sherrick. Fairfield down 16 to Westfield. Wouldn't be surprised to see Fairfield try to pick up full court if they score here. Charlie bumps. Sherrick. You know, it's really amazing as much. Oh, I think that foul went underneath the uh, Hales, I guess. They were oh, did they give it to Hale? Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, 21. no. 21. Who's 21? Hmm. Did they get it up? I don't think that was right. Faldo. His shot's up. Air ball. Going to have a three-point free throw coming here. Yeah, the foul was on Elijah, his second. I don't think Dennis will archive this game and keep it as one of his better ones. <laughs> <laughs> He's hustling, but. Yeah, some games don't go your way, and you just got to flush it move on. Dennis picks up that foul. It's a three-point free throw coming for Faldo, and that, he hits his first. That was another questionable call, too. If he'd have made that shot, I don't think they would even have called it. It's one of those after he lands, he kind of gets bumped just a little bit. 17 now for Faldo, and he'll get one more. Well, the game's certainly not over. If we let down a little bit, Fairfield hits a couple shots, they're right back in it. So we want to come out, and we want to not hold the ball, but be patient and get great shots, get layups and hit free throws, and just put this game away. And Faldo hits all three. Good, good little ball player. Josh O'Sutler gets it to Hales. Hales to Charlie. Josh, Elijah. Charlie right side. He drives it, then picks up his dribble, gets off to Rensburger, now to Hales, and Hales is fouled as he drives toward the bucket. And that's going to go against Hofer, his third. Dennis Wingard will inbound. Charlie Yoder with it now with Nolan Sherrick on him. No hurry here. He pass to Charlie on the baseline from Hales. Back out front, Wingard now, Rensberger. Yeah, it takes the crowd out of the game, but I don't think anybody cares. Ball stolen away. Fairfield comes up with it. Skyler Miller inside mask, and he put the spinning shot up and in. Hales across the timeline, and he's fouled as he crosses the timeline. Not a great way to start the quarter, giving up five points in a minute and 20 and having a turnover. Mask picks up his second foul. Westview's lead is down to six or down to uh, 11 now. Oh, it, is, it was 16 at halftime, right? At the end of three. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, end of third quarter. Hales backs out, then drives it against Sherrick, bounce pass left side, Yoder left open for three, and he hits his fifth three of the night. <laughs> Shooting cures a lot of ills, that's for sure. <laughs> 17 now for Charlie and 15 of those from beyond the arc. Mass drives it down on the baseline and gets into trouble. Throws it away. Charlie with the interception. He drives it, puts it up, scores off the glass. Very nice. Very skilled right there to take a full court against two guys behind the back and lay it in. That's just lots of practice. Ball deflected into Nick Rensberger's hand inside the lane. Back up to 16. That didn't take long. Yoder gets a pick from Drew Litweiler. Won't take the shot, gives off the winger. Charlie again, he's open for three and he hits again. Six <laughs> threes Charlie's for Charlie. feeling it tonight. <laughs> he sure is. Well, I know he was fired up for this game. It's There's a lot of reasons to it, but. 22 points for Charlie. Timeout on the court called by Fairfield with 5.29 to go. 54-35 Westview will be back in 30 seconds. Want to know what I like better?
best about playing basketball for my high school. I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. Westview with 10 threes tonight. In fact, I think the fans over there that were putting them up on the wall ran out of threes. They're, they're that or they're tired of jumping. <laughs> they got to jump to put the th <laughs> Yeah, really. <laughs> it's like doing push-ups after a touchdown. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Well, I don't know if we – I can't remember if we've missed one this half. Yeah, I think Drew Littweiler yeah, might Drew have missed, missed one. Drew missed one and maybe Charlie missed one. I don't know. Yeah, I think you might be right. So, let's say we've missed two of them. We'd be for the game 10 for 19. Wow. Not bad. Yeah. Over 50%. Take 55% three. from three. Yeah. Hofer drives. He's going to be called for an offensive foul. There's no doubt on that one. He was using the forearm to clear a path. Well, I think the, is fourth. the thing that impresses me the most tonight is even, and we've seen it before, we saw it against Prairie Heights the other night, even when our offense isn't clicking, we have our defense. And let's keep yeah, us in the game Elijah. until we get it going. <laughs> <laughs> nice drive by Hales. Bentley Miller, the freshman back in, Braden Helms, number 11. He'll get it to Faldo. Hofer, Hofer will pop a three, and it's way off the mark. Chased down by Rensberger. He'll get it to Yoder. Back we come. Hales to Litweiler, back out front to Hales. Not a Dennis Winger, they'll swing it over to Charlie for another three, this time it's off the front of the rim, no good. Battle for it inside the Westview lane and it's gonna be a held ball and it's gonna go Westview's way. Tonight's one of those nights when Charlie shoots and misses, you're shocked. I know, it's like, <laughs> okay, it's, just been, it's gonna go in. Yeah, he's just been in such a good rhythm tonight, so. You could tell he was kind of blaming himself for that shot. It was a little bit quick. You know, with the situation, 21-point lead, four and a half minutes to go. Hey, I don't have any problem. <laughs> Keep expanding the lead. I'm That's the right. last guy to say that, but, you know, let's get a great shot. Hales. Bounce passes it in. Tried to get it in. He did get it into Nick, but then it was stripped away. Nolan Sherry comes out with it. He'll take it down into the lane, puts it up short. Rebound, Nick Rensberger. Outlet pass quickly to Hales. Hales will take it up against two or three Falcons. And we have a whistle and a reach in from behind, and a foul's going to be called on Skyler Mass. I think in the NBA that would be two free throws because he took two more steps after the foul and then faked the shot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no <laughs> dice in the NECC. <laughs> Hales lobs it into Charlie in the paint. And now we have another foul on Fairfield. And again, I think Mast picked it up. Maybe and it was that's Zarek. one and one. Nope, it's Mast again. That's his fourth. Charlie now up to 25 points on the night. Yep. And he hits a free throw. Did I? I must have missed something here. I have 18 from the three-point land. 22-23. Well, I must have missed a bucket somewhere. Or they got too many. Yeah, maybe. You know, they did. No, yeah, no, he's up to 26. Oh, rejected. Sherrick was rejected by Charlie Yoder. Former classmates here at Westview. They weren't just classmates. They played a, well, they're not in. Uh, they Is played AAU, AAU coming up all the way through the grades. and Right. Know each other pretty well. Ball stolen away by Dennis Wingard underneath on the attempted pass. Charlie. Gets it to Hales. Inside Nick. Wide open off the glass and good. Well, I said before the game I'd be happy with a 25-point win. At halftime, hey. I did envision this. <laughs> This is going to be at least that, it looks like. Nick Rensberger with 12 now. 
Nass puts up a three and hits. First three of the night for him. Sherrick loses or trips, falls down, knocked away from behind, so it'll be uh, Fairfield's ball, or Westview ball, I should say. Riley Beals will come in for Fairfield as Coach Beachy starts to unload his bench. Also, Donovan Edwards into the lineup, and Cade Kitson back in is uh, Cade Gall. Or, let's see, yeah, Cade Gall. And it's Hales again going in. 12 now for Elijah tonight, 62 to 38. Jordan Schrock in for Westview. With the ball is Donovan Edwards. Well, this is kind of been a strange game. The first half was really back and forth, and the crowd was almost not into it because of all the turnovers and stoppages. This half, we've blown them out so bad they're not in it either. No, that's true. <laughs> Just, we, they were briefly during our run, but. Jordan Schrock was over there battling for the basketball, kind of out of our sight, but it was last touched by the Falcon there, Donovan Edwards. Bryce Willard coming in for Fairfield. He's the son of, let's see, athletic director at West Noble. <laughs> I believe. What's going on? Oh, you had uh, a, a contingent of Fairfield fans yelling at the fan, yelling at Rob. Sure, keep your kid in there, getting more points. And Charlie oh, just no. stared at him as he's walking up the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm sure he hears a lot of that. Hey, it's their job to stop us. It's not our job to keep the score down. That's right. If they if they played a complete game in both halves, it'd be a close game, and they wouldn't have to worry about it. But. Inside Willard shot up off the glass and good. Grace's mother also teaches at Meadowview. Gina Willard. Is that right? Yep. Well, I don't think we're going to do wholesale substitutions, but we will kind of hold the ball and just kind of run it out, I believe. Well, maybe not. Hales drives, puts it up and in. 14 now for Elijah tonight, 64 to 40. Westview up by 24. So now we'll be waiting to uh, see tomorrow what kind of horrendous snow we get as to whether we have a game or not. Well, that's true. It's supposed to stop by, well, it'll be past game time, I think, before it start, stops. So it, it just all depends on the amount. Yeah, well, just keep tuned to your stations. We'll try to post it on our website. And Maybe Facebook or our uh, yeah website, Facebook page. Westview has this one well in hand, and Garrett coming in tomorrow night, right close to the bottom of the conference. So a little bit uh, of a different ball game coming up for us tomorrow night. Yeah, they were even defeated by Hamilton. So an official timeout there to let the players come in for Westview. Blake, Blake Eggley comes in. And the, let's see, 23, and that's one of the Millers, Linden. Tim Brandenburger's in. Mason Yoder, the freshman. And uh, fans are filing out of Westview. Trying to beat the crowd getting out of here. <laughs> and the snow. Yeah, and the snow, true. Mason Yoder goes left side to Tim Brandenburger. Westview with a big win tonight, a big conference win, as Fairfield will drop their first loss, their first game in the conference. They're, they'll be 4-1, and one, and Westview will go to 6-0 and oh in the Northeast Corner Conference. Is the time click, clicks away, clicks away. And that'll do it from Westview tonight.
Our final score, Westview 64 and Fairfield 40. And we'll be back to take a look at the scoring for tonight's ball game right after this 60 second timeout. When you're turning your house into a home, your furniture plays a big part in the finished product. You'll love the finished products at Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana. Come see the Weaver family. They will work with you to find a piece that fits your needs, or they'll have it custom built just for you. Weaver Furniture Sales is located just south of 5 and 20 in Shipshawana. Visit their website at weaverfurnituresales.com. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> Back at Westview High School where the game has just ended, 64 to 40, Westview Defeats Fairfield. Let's take a look at the individual scoring real quick. Peyton Faldo led Fairfield. He had nine in each half for a total of 18. Benton Miller had uh, four points in the first half, and that's what he finished with. Skyler Mast had four in the first half, five in the second to finish with nine. Cordell Hoffer had three points in the first half and one point in the second half. Wow. Nolan Sherrick had three in the first half and none in the second half. And Bryce Willard who came in there at the end, added a bucket for two for a total of 40 for Fairfield. And on the season, they had been averaging 50, almost 52 points a game, so we held them almost 12 under their average. And they had been giving up 42 points a game, so we had 22 more than their average. So that's excellent on both ends. For Westview tonight, Charlie Oder finished with 27 points. He had six three-pointers and just dominated the second half on both ends of the floor. Elijah Hales finished with 14. Drew Litweiler had three. Josh Hosteller had, uh, let's see, all eight of his, no. Yeah, he finished with eight. Looked like he had three in the first half. Nick Rensberger had two in the first half and 10 in the second half for a total of 12. So we talked about the two things that Fairfield needed to happen for them to stay close. We needed to play uncharacteristically sloppy, which we did for much of the first half. And our complimentary players had to not hit any shots. Well, in the second half, Nick had 10, Josh had 5, and that really was enough to break the dam. And then Charlie just took over from there. So just a very satisfying second half, especially. Great win and uh, a testament to the hard work. And I think it really showed tonight. We got down 8 to nothing, didn't panic, came right. back, tied the game. And it was just back and forth for a while, but that's why you play four quarters. What team's mentally tough enough to do it in both halves? You know, there's something. It seems like there's something magical about a 10-minute intermission. Yeah. But. Well, I think it, you can attribute a lot of that to a, the coach in the locker room and yep, making adjustments. Making some of the adjustments, but it's also uh, toughness. And we showed the toughness tonight. I didn't think Fairfield came out with the same intensity in the no, second half. No, I don't half. think so, especially you know, when we got up like eight or ten. It well, we scored, the first, yeah, right. we scored the first five. They called timeout. Right. And then we scored up to an 11-point lead. They called another timeout. You know, you just had a timeout. Why do you yeah. need another one? Right. So it's just that's individual players. That's a program. How do, you, how do you play for four quarters? And we've seen a little bit of Fairfield this year up and a little bit of down. And tonight we saw it both in the same game. And yeah, we did. It, it hurt them. So, so some of the other stats here, we, uh, Fairfield finished with 17 turnovers. I think they had 10 in the first half. We had eight in the first half, but only three in the second half. A so good, clean second half by both teams. Definitely. Yeah. At 11. Assists, we had, uh, is that right? Wow. We had 20 assists in the game. 20 assists on 24 field goals. I remember some because they were great passes underneath. And that's but, incredible. Yeah, 20, uh, that is. That's unbelievable. That's an incredible percentage. For the, the game, we shot 11 for 22 from three, which is exactly 50%. Free throws, only five for seven. Fairfield was six for 16 from three. I think they were, I had that in the first half. Uh, do, 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 four for nine. So the second half, they shot two for seven. 
rebounds. It was pretty close at halftime. Uh, 16 for Fairfield, 18 for Westview. So we beat them rebounding, and we beat them uh, with assists. Let's see, blocks. I think we had one block. They had none. So not a whole lot in that category. But uh, just an overall dominating second half. First quarter, Fairfield 10 to 9. Second quarter, 13 13. Third quarter, Westview 24 to 7. And fourth quarter, 18 to 10. So very, very satisfying win, I must say. Oh, right. From yeah, a program no standpoint, doubt. you know, certainly we're fans of Westview from a personal standpoint. And especially big if you want to win the conference. That's right. And you don't. You don't want to win it. You know, last year technically we won it. We tied for it, but we lost the head-to-head. -head. We want you want to win it outright, and That's if right. you can go undefeated in the process, even better. So we're on our way for that. We certainly are. I, th I think you mentioned it earlier, Jamie, that we should be through our hard <laughs> portion of the of our schedule in the in the Northeast Corner Conference. Although I hate to say that because <laughs> everybody's out to get. You know the Warriors, but well, you're right. But if you look at the records of teams and right. where they're ranked, and maybe even their state rank, the the last half is does not have the same level of oomph that the first half had. Yeah, Garrett tomorrow night, and then of course Prairie Heights is still left. Fremont at West Noble. West Noble, yeah. So, yes, absolutely. That you know Prairie Heights game could be interesting. It could they give us a pretty yeah. good battle. I, well, uh, I'd be interested to see how we match up on normal rest. Right. You know, not our fifth, fourth game in five nights on the <laughs> yeah. road. Yeah, exactly. Where Prairie Heights had a bye and then a home game. Right. But uh, they've got some talent there. We they do. It, they got uh, some things yeah. to work through. But satisfying win tonight. There's still some things to work on. I think we turned it over too much. I think we need uh, to get Dennis back in the game a little bit. He looks like he's struggling. You know, confidence is such a big thing. Right. And you saw last year where he hit a few key shots against Fairfield in an NECC championship. And then he really blossomed, and he would hit that key shot during the game. And this year he's, he's kind of struggling right now. But the coaches are good at, at recognizing that and figuring out ways to turn it around. And I, I look for that in the next few games to get him back going a little bit. Well, we hope we'll see you out here tomorrow night, the Westview Garrett game right here at Westview High School, weather permitting, of course. If you can't make it out, we'll be here for you on LaguanaMedia.com. Glad you could join us tonight. Once again, the girls' final was 42-32, Westview defeating Fairfield. The boys' final tonight was 64-40, Westview defeating Fairfield. The JV also won tonight. Yeah, 48-44. 40, so great night for the Warriors. I didn't hear a score on the uh, junior varsity uh, JV girls. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I did not hear that. They either. played Goshen tonight. Uh, Fairfield didn't have a JV. Team, oh, I didn't so. even realize yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that came out of my mouth in random place tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do mention you. I do remember you mentioning yeah. the word Goshen, and it didn't register. Yeah, that's. But. I think that's. I had that in the back of my mind to mention, and it came out. Yeah. Anyway, Westview goes to 13 and 4 now overall, 6 and 0 in the Northeast Corner Conference. Fairfield drops to 8 and 5 overall and 4 and 1 in the Northeast Corner Conference. So that'll do it for tonight. Thank you to our camera operator tonight, Eric Hart, our engineer Justin Geigley. Color commentator was Dan Byler in the first game and of course Jamie Miller here in the second game. And for all of those, this is Jerry Hostetler. Good night, everyone. But don't forget, tonight's game was brought to you by the Blue Gate Restaurant in Shipshawana, by Mike's Automotive Service in Topeka, by Fur May Funeral Home in LaGrange, also by Hyde Auto Body in LaGrange, Topeka Do It Best Hardware, as well as Topeka Pharmacy, Dale's Dependable Handyman Service, also by Weaver Furniture in Shipshawana, by Jerry Standard in Middlebury, by the Hometown Treasure, also by Yoder Insurance in Shipshawana. Quality Floor in Topeka by Frontline Auto Tech in Topeka. Also, or in Shipshawana rather, by Yoder Shipshawana Hardware and by Troyer Saddlery. And our halftime trivia contest is brought to you by Shipshi Pizza. Our, and by the way, congratulations to our winner tonight, Kevin Kastetter. He will enjoy a free one-topping pizza from Shipshi Pizza.
Our individual sponsors tonight, Dan and Dawn Byler, John and Leslie Cook, Tim and Donna Height, Jerry and Fran Hostetler, Josiah and Candace Parker, Jim and Liz Stump, Tim and Kim Taylor, and Roger and Esther Winger. Good night, everyone.